Hey guys, welcome to my level 1 to 99 and 120 divination guide. Using this guide, you will be able to train divination efficiently in order to reach your goal. I'll also be mentioning various useful equipments and ways to enhance your experience, as well as breaking down each method depending on your divination level. You can use the timestamps in the description to jump between each part. Anyway guys, I really hope you do enjoy. So to start this guide off, I want to go over the basics of divination since it can be a confusing skill to train at first. So divination is a gathering and manufacturing skill and the main way of training the skill is through gathering divine energy and memories from wisps. Now the full divination tutorial can be started just south of Draenor Village at the Pale Wisps, but basically you will be harvesting memories from wisps that float around the rift. Now, once your inventory is filled with these memories, you can deposit them into the rift, and there are three different options when depositing your memories. The first option is to turn the memories into energy. Now, this gives little XP, however, you will obtain more energy, which is later used for manufacturing things like Sign of the Porters or Divine Chargers, and it can also be sold on the Grand Exchange and used as a money-making method. The second option is to turn the memories into XP. Now, the third option is to convert both your memories and energies into XP, and this will provide players with slightly more XP than the second option. I recommend using either the second or third option, depending on your specific goals. If you want to train the skill without spending money, then use the second option. Otherwise, if you're someone who doesn't mind spending a little bit of extra money to train the skill faster, you can buy additional energy and convert it into XP along with the memories using this option. So now that we covered the basics of divination, I want to go into some useful items and how you can get some extra XP out of this skill. So some general XP boosts that you guys can use to gain a little bit more XP when you are training divination are listed on screen. First off, we have the wise perk. This can be added to an offhand weapon when you are training the skill. Basically, it will give you a 1 to 3% extra XP boost um, depending on the rank of the wise perk, and this will be capped at 50,000 XP per day. Next, we have the wisdom aura. This will give you a 2.5% uh, XP boost on the skill. Um, we also have the Torso Incense Stick. You can use either one to four of them, and each stick will give a 0.5% XP boost. Um, so depending on that, you'll get 0.5% extra XP up to 2%. There's also the Clan Avatar XP boost. This will give 3 to 6% extra XP. Then you also have the Pulse and Cinder Cores secondary effect, where it will give you a 2% XP boost for each Pulse Core that you are around when it is popped you can gain a maximum of 10% extra XP from these. There's also the Refer a Friend scroll, which is a 10% XP boost. Um, also, Double XP Weekend does work on uh, Divination, so you get an extra double XP from that. And then also, going on World 79, which is the Divination World, is highly recommended for this skill. Since the skill does have some social XP boosts, which will help you train the skill. So if you are around other players training the skill as well, you'll actually be able to train it a little bit more efficiently. Now building off of this, I want to talk about some of the social boosts. So each additional player that is interacting with the actual uh, divination spring or divination wisp will add 15 seconds to its duration and you'll have a maximum of five players being able to do this for a maximum of an extra 75 seconds now each divination spring will last one minute um, upon interacting with it so this will basically increase that duration to two minutes and 15 seconds Another buff that can be activated when you are training with other players is the memory overflow buff. So basically this will activate when enough players empower the rift. So you can do it individually, but if you are training with other players, of course this will happen a lot more frequently. And this buff is really helpful. It will give you a plus one base energy from depositing the memories. It'll also give you 5% more XP from deposited memories as well as a 10% higher critical chance when siphoning from the nearby springs, meaning that you will have a 10% chance 
to get an enriched wisp um, and then there's also the guaranteed uh, enriched wisp that will spawn when the rift is powered in order to receive the memory overflow buff, you will need to empower the energy rift. So as you can see, you can check the power. Right now it's at 3%. You can empower it by using the chronicle fragments that you just get through training the skill. Um, these chronicle fragments will basically just appear a lot like fire spirits when you are training it and uh, uh, harvesting from these springs. So if you do have enough of them, you can empower the uh, energy rift and this will allow you to activate the memory overflow buff and it will also spawn an enriched wisp where you will be getting the enriched memories allowing you to gain even more xp per hour the enriched memories basically give you double the xp as a normal memory so that's why you are going to want to be doing this you'll also have a chance at getting these enriched memories while you are interacting with a normal uh, divination spring however it is guaranteed when you are interacting with an enriched one the next xp boost that you should be aware of is the memorial of guthic's perks so there are three really great ones that you should use so first off is the ethereal connection perk this will increase the duration of the divination springs um, there's also the abyssal transit perk this will allow chronicles to contribute twice as much progress when you are empowering the energy risps and there's also Wisp Herder, so converting memories will also have a small chance to spawn additional Wisps when you have this perk active. In order to activate these perks, you can head to the Memorial of Guthics. Just interact with the Fountain of Energy here, and you will be able to choose your perks. You'll be able to choose three of them, one in each category. Um, however, you will need to unlock them first. I recommend using these three perks that I have active on screen now. However, if you do have the Divination Cape, then the Ethereal Connection perk actually doesn't provide you an extra boost. So if you do have the Divination Cape, I recommend switching that to the Wisp Herder perk instead. Another useful item that you guys should use if you do have it is the Diviner's Outfit. This can be obtained via the Gothiaxian Caches, which I will discuss later on in the video. There will also be a timestamp to this. But basically, the Diviner's Outfit will provide you a 1% XP boost per equipment that you do have active, and then you also get a 1% extra XP boost for the full set. Uh, totaling a maximum of 6% extra XP. You can also get the modified Diviner's Headwear. You can get the piece that you can modify this via the Treasure Hunter. If you do have the modified Diviner's Headwear, you can teleport a few times per day, and you can also collect free Chronicles each day, which can then be used to empower the Rift. Another useful item is the Elder Divination Outfit. This you will most likely have unlocked in the later levels of Divination as it can be made through invention using the Divination Fragments. You'll need a total of 54,000 Divination Fragments to make the whole outfit um, as it will be combined into three different others. So the Divination Outfit does provide you a lot of really useful boosts. It will give you three daily teleports, 7% chance to harvest two memories at once, 7% chance to get two Chronicle Fragments, and then also a 7% chance of granting 100% crit chance. Uh, this outfit will also give you a 5% chance of gathering five times the energy while harvesting Wisps. And if you do have the Diviner's Outfit and the modified Diviner's Headwear, you will gain the benefits from these simply by wearing the Elder Divination outfit. Familiars are also really helpful when you are training Divination. So there are three main familiars which are the best. The best being Nightmare Muspas. So you can use these at 81 summoning. And basically it will store 32 memories as a beast of burden. So you will be able to collect and gather the memories a lot longer making a little bit more AFK. You also have a 3% chance to find an enriched memory as well, making this familiar the best. Another great familiar is the Light Creature. This requires 88 summoning and it will give you a 10% chance to instantly convert memories. So this is really helpful, especially if you don't have the Divine Conversion Relic, which I will mention later. Lastly, at level 50 summoning, you can use the Water Fiend Familiar and this will give you a 5% chance to duplicate the memory obtained 
when you are gathering it from the springs. Using divination urns is another great way to gain a little bit of extra XP when training the skill. You can buy these divination urns off of the Grand Exchange, however, you will need to add a mind rune to them in order to make them functional. So the best urn being the decorated divination urn, and you will require 82 crafting to add a mine rune to this one. Um, basically what these urns do is you will require a certain amount of experience to fill them. For example, the decorated divination urn requires 9,500. Once you reach that amount of XP, you can teleport off the urn for an additional 1,900 XP. So these are really helpful when training the skill. Also in your settings you can go to the interface tab and then under inventory and inventory management you will have the option to automatically teleport your urns as soon as they're filled so you can tick off that box just to make this quality of life option active. Skill chompas are another item that you can use to get an increased chance at enriched memories. So as you can see, there are five different skill champas requiring specific divination level, and you can use these, they will be consumed, so they will add a little bit of cost to training divination. However, they will increase your XP per hour. The enrichment auras are also really helpful when training the skill. So if you do have some extra loyalty points, you could use them to buy the enrichment aura. There are five different tiers. Each tier will increase the chance of obtaining an enriched memory, which will obviously increase the amount of XP you will get per hour. There are also two scrimshaws which can help you train divination, one being the memory crushing scrimshaw and the other being the energy gathering scrimshaw. The best one is probably the Energy Gathering Scrimshaw. This will give you a 15% chance to double the energy received when you are gathering memories. Now the Memory Crushing Scrimshaw is also pretty decent as well, especially if you don't have the Divine Conversion Relic. It will give you a 15% chance to instantly convert the memories when you do obtain them. Both of these Scrimshaws cost right around 1 mil and they will last 3 hours. And now finally, I want to talk about the relics, especially the Divine Conversion Relic. So you can obtain relics through archaeology, and the Divine Conversion Relic is obtained at 98 archaeology. When you are converting the memories at a rift, you will convert your entire backpack in one go rather than depositing one memory at a time. Based on my testing, I found that the Divine Conversion Relic gave players approximately 65% more XP per hour, so this is by far the best item that you can obtain for training divination. So if you guys do have level 98 archaeology, then you will definitely want to make sure to go ahead and get this relic. I will link a guide talking about how to get the Divine Conversion Relic, so if you guys are interested in that, check in the description down below. Also, there is the Inspire Effort Relic. This will allow you to gain 2% more XP when you are training a gathering skill where Divination is included into that. Now, as for the other boosts, there are a few others. First off is the Chronicle Attraction Curse. So this is a prayer that can be unlocked with the light within. It will also require 87 prayer to activate it. So when it is active, basically it will automatically capture the chronicles when you are training divination. So these chronicle fragments, they do come in two different types. There is just the regular ones and then there's the enhanced chronicle fragments if you do capture them within six seconds. So since you are automatically capturing them, you'll always get the enhanced chronicle fragments. There are also three different types of divination potions you have the regular divination potion the super divination potion and the extreme divination potion so the regular gives a plus three boost whereas the super gives a plus five boost and they both can be purchased on the grand exchange with level 89 herb lore however you can make the extreme divination potion the extreme divination potion will boost your divination level up to 17 levels depending on your divination level so for example, at level 70 divination, this potion will only boost it five levels. However, at level 82 divination, it will boost the maximum 17 levels. The Prism of Dowsing is also another boost that you can use. It's a spell that is used in the ancient spellbook, and it will enrich divine memories and grants a 5% critical chance when they are nearby. 
Next is the Pontifex Observation Ring, which you will obtain after completing the Azandra's quest, and this will give you 1% extra Divination XP. The Divination Cape is also another really helpful item. It will increase the spring durations by 30 seconds. There are also a few quests that can be completed in order to obtain Divination XP, and as you can see on screen is a list of the quests, the experience rewards, divination requirements, as well as their other skilling requirements. Now before I go into the actual divination training methods, I want to talk about boons since you should try and get them every spot you are at. So there are a bunch of different types of boons and they are untradeable single use items that you can create from divine energy. So when one of these boons is used, it will grant a permanent 10% XP boost and energy boost when you are converting a particular type of memory. So for example, the boon of flickering energy will allow you to get 10% extra XP and energy boost when you are doing flickering energies. So you should try and make these boons as soon as you can since it will give you more XP when training the skill. And not only that, you will get some more energy as well, so you will make up for the cost. Now before we get into the actual methods of training the skill, I do want to briefly talk about the Gothixian Caches, which is a way of gaining Divination XP daily. Now these caches can be done on the top of every hour, and you can do two of them per day. So essentially this is a distraction and diversion and it is pretty simple. Basically you will be trying to transport these memories to the middle in the unstable rift without the automatons destroying the memories. So if you do get too close to these automatons when you are carrying one of these uh, memories they will smash it out of your hands. Um, you can surge to try and get by them however sometimes it does glitch out and they will still just smash your memories. Another way of gaining points is by transforming into one of the Krays. When you are in this form, you can actually subdue all of the automatons and you get one point each for each automaton that you are subdued. And then you will get two points for the confused automatons. However, this will require 45 divination and you'll get three points for the enraged automatons, the one carrying the fire and this requires 85 divination. And same with the memories, there are four different types of memories. There's the tiny memory, which you can pick up at level one divination, the raw memory at 45 divination, the large memory at 85 divination, and then there's the ancient memory at 92 divination. And each one of these memories will increase the points you get for uh, offering them by one. So basically you can get a maximum of 100 points in this mini game, and if you get the 100 points, you'll get the maximum amount of XP. You also receive a chance at receiving a Diviner's Outfit piece. You get 0.5% chance per point, meaning if you have 100 points, you'll have a 50% chance at getting one of these pieces. So it is highly recommended to do this method throughout training divination, not only to get to the Diviner's Outfit, but also to obtain some really fast divination XP. The minigame, it takes 10 minutes tops, that's when it does cap out, however if you are a higher level you can get the 100 points within 5 minutes of work. And if you are at level 99 divination, you're going to be getting 146,800 XP a day for this, and then just for one session, for, so for example for 5 minutes, you can get around 73,000 XP. If you take this into XP per hour, that's over 800k XP per hour, so this is by far the most efficient way to train divination. So starting off at level 1, the best spot to train is at the Cursed Energy in the Wilderness. So do keep in mind this is in the Wilderness, so you won't want to risk any items, um, but you can train here from level 1 to 70. It is the best XP per hour. Um, now you will get around 9k XP per hour at level 1, and it does scale depending on your level. So you can make up to 109k XP per hour if you are level 99 divination. And then also, as you can see in the brackets, this is the XP rates that you can expect if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic. So at level 1, with the Divine Conversion Relic, you should expect around 15k, and at level 99, you can get up to 180k XP per hour. Now, if you don't want to train in the wilderness, you can also train 
at the various different locations throughout RuneScape. So first off, level 1 through 10 is the Pale Wisps. You'll be getting around 4k XP per hour, but it is only through levels 1 to 10, and then if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic, you can get around 9k XP per hour. Now, from levels 10 to level 20, you can do the Flickering Wisps, which are located just a little bit east of the Falador Lodestone. At this location, you can expect around 8k XP per hour if you don't have the Divine Conversion Relic, and if you do have this relic, then you can expect around 13k XP per hour. At level 20 to 30, you will want to do the Bright Wisps. This is located just east of Verak, and you can get around 11k XP per hour without the Relic and 18k with the Divine Conversion Relic. At levels 30 to 40, you will want to do the Glowing Wisps. The Glowing Wisps are located just south of Sears Village, and you can expect to get around 15k XP per hour, and then 25k if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic. At levels 40 to 50, you will want to go to the Sparkling Wisps. These are located in the Fremenic province. You can get here by teleporting to the Fremenic Lodestone and then just running southeast. You can get around 20,000 experience per hour here and then up to 40k if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic. Levels 50 to 60 will be at the Gleaming Wisps. These are located on Karamja. To get to this location, you can teleport to the Karamja Lodestone and then just run southeast. You can get around 25k XP per hour normally and 45k with the Relic. At levels 60 through 65, you'll want to be doing the Vibrant Wisps. You can do these uh, located right next to the Warforge uh, Archaeology Dig Site or you can teleport to the Ooglog Lodestone and run west. You can get around 45k XP per hour here, and then 70k if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic. Level 65 to 70 is going to be a bit different. You're going to be going to the Empty Throne Room. Now this does require the Dig Site quest to be completed. And also, you'll only want to do this if you don't have the Divine Conversion Relic. Otherwise, the Vibrant Wisps will be slightly better XP. So in order to do the Empty Throne Room sort of mini game. It is really simple and it's actually kind of AFK as well, which is really nice. So training in the empty throne room is pretty simple. Once you get in, you will want to withdraw the crystals from the storage bin. You can then click on them to transmute them. Now it doesn't matter which color you choose, so you can choose any color and then just make sure you weave them. So this will take 50 seconds, so it's nice and AFK. Um, now you will notice that one of the bins is empowered. It actually doesn't give you any extra XP if you put them in the empowered crate. So it doesn't matter if there's the purple circle around it. You can just deposit it in any crate and you'll get the same amount of XP. Now once you reach level 70 divination, you will unlock the best method for training the skill, which is the Hall of Memories. So you want to do this from level 70 to 99 or even 120 and you'll get around 110k XP per hour at level 70, and at level 99 you can get upwards of 300k XP per hour. So the Hall of Memories is located at the Shrine of Guthix, and in order to start you'll want to go over to the Jar Deposit area and withdraw a full inventory of jars. Basically what you're going to be doing is filling these jars by harvesting the memories inside this room. So the best way of doing the Hall of Memories is by joining the Core Hunting Friends Chat or the Core Hunting Discord, and I will post a link to that Discord in the description. But basically, by joining the Core Hunting Friends Chat, you will be able to find out when the Pulse Core party at the Hall of Memories would be. So this is when a ton of players gather in the Hall of Memories with a bunch of memory fragments and Pulse Cores. So memory fragments are essentially a lot like the chronicle fragments as they will spawn while you are within the Hall of Memories. You'll want to pick these up and they can be placed on the plinths in the northern section of the hall. Then when all six of the plinths are filled, a special memory will spawn in the middle and that can be harvested for some more XP. So as you can see, the table on the right does list the different core types that can spawn in the middle when all six plinths are filled. 
Now it does require a higher divination level for many of them. So if you are level 70 divination, you won't be able to reach that high level of XP per hour. But at level 95, you will be able to reach the maximum of 300k divination XP per hour. So these core hunting parties, they are best because you do get to fill up the jars a lot faster when you are harvesting from these special memories that do spawn in the middle. Now there is also a method to two tick this in order to maximize the amount of XP. This is when you click the memory every 0.8 seconds and you'll be able to gather more XP per hour than if you just AFK it. So this is a pretty sweaty way of training the skill, however it will maximize your XP per hour. It is recommended if you're looking to train the skill as fast as possible and it is especially useful when the memories spawn in the middle. Now lastly, once your jars are filled, you will be able to essentially offer them in the unstable rift here in the Hall of Memories, and this is where you are going to be getting most of your XP. Now an alternative way of training at level 95 is at the Incandescent Wisps. Now this is located in the Poison Swamps. Um, you can get here by teleporting to Yanil and then running west. Um, but at this spot, it is the last spot for the regular divination training. You can get around 90k XP training regularly and then around 150k if you do have the Divine Conversion Relic. Also at level 95 divination, you will unlock the ability to transmute the cursed energy into incandescent energy. And this is actually a really great way of training the skill, however, it most likely will be costly. Cursed Energy can't actually be traded on the Grand Exchange, so you will either have to gather it yourself through the Wilderness Divination Training, which I did show you at the beginning of these methods, or you can purchase it from another player. So since it can't be traded on the Grand Exchange, you can actually trade in between players. You can search on the RuneScape forums for people bulk selling Cursed Energy. Usually the price will be slightly higher than what you'll make out of it, so you are going to be losing money by transmuting it, but this is a really great way of training. You'll get around 210,000 divination XP per hour, and as you can see, it is a really AFK method. So this is definitely a method that a lot of players like doing, especially at the higher levels of divination. And so anyway guys, that is all I have for you in this divination guide. If you guys have any questions about anything mentioned in the video, let me know in the comments and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Also, if you did enjoy the video, make sure to like the video. It will be greatly appreciated. And anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.